place. I was the voice in the distance from this morning. Uh, thank you for joining us, everyone who's here and online. And uh, let's open in prayer. God, I thank you for this time that we can come together in your name. Lord, I pray that your kingdom come and that your will be done here today and that everything that happens would stand as truth in your kingdom. Lord, we declare that we want to follow your lead, do what you want to do. And Lord, we choose now to enter into your rest and into your time. In Jesus' name. So uh, just a few logistic items. If you're here in the room, as you saw this morning, everything that's said needs to be said into a microphone so it can go on the recording and so the people who are online will be able to hear. Um, <clears throat> and so we have one mic for each section. That way I can hopefully save you from having to jump around so much. And then we do have people who are joining online. So, and then so for those of you who are online, Anytime you have a question or comment, feel free to type it into the chat. I'll give you a quick reminder. If you'd like to bring the video view full screen, click on the thumbnail on the top right hand corner. It looks like three people. It'll make the video full screen. And then you can go to the top, choose chat, and that way you can see the chat all the time plus the video is full. Uh, we try to make this as interactive as possible, so please let us know any questions or comments. Speaking of interactive, I have a question to pose to everyone. So. I'm going to actually, when I would do this with my youth group, I'd like hit him with a question and I'd go, go, give me the answer. <laughs> but I'm going to give you time to percolate. OK, you're welcome. My question for you is, name a passage that has helped you learn about God's nature or a passage that helped bring you new freedom. OK, so be thinking about that. Don't think too hard, because then you won't be paying attention to me. Okay, all right, so with that, we're going to actually go dive right in, and by the way, I have Deanna with me today. Welcome, thank you. And um, let's dig right in. We're going to go to Genesis chapter 22, <laughs> and uh, we're going to take a look at an example right out of the Bible of how Abraham demonstrated his knowledge of God's nature. And so we're going to be looking at Genesis chapter 22. My goal is to go through verses 1 through 19, and then we'll go from there. All right, so I'll start. Genesis 22. Now it came to pass after these things that God tested Abraham and said to him, Abraham, which makes sense, since that's his name. And he said, here I am. Then he said, take now your son, your only son Isaac, whom you love, and go to the land of Moriah, and offer him there as a burnt offering, on one of the mountains of which I shall tell you. So Abraham rose early in the morning, and saddled his donkey, and took two of his young men with him, and Isaac his son. And he split the wood for the burnt offering, and arose and went to the place which God had told him. And then on the third day, Abraham lifted his eyes, and saw the place far off. How many days was it? Three? Mm, three. Come back to that. And Abraham said to his young man, stay here with the donkey. Uh, the lad and I will go yonder and worship. That's what I call my son, too, the lad. Maybe, <laughs> maybe not. It's Irish. It's Irish. <laughs> Laddie? Wait, uh, but I'm not Irish. So, oh, OK. And we will, uh, so let me read that again. I'm, Diverting myself. Stay here with the donkey and the lad, and the lad and I will go yonder and worship, and we will come back to you. So Abraham took the wood of the burnt offering and laid it on Isaac, his son. And he took the fire in his hand and a knife, and the two of them went together. But Isaac spoke to Abraham, his father, and said, My father, because um, Isaac's kind of noticing something's missing from this picture, is my father, here I am, my son said, 
Then he said, look, the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And Abraham said, my son, God will provide for himself the lamb for a burnt offering. So the two of them went together. We'll continue here from verse 9. Then they came to the place of which God had told him, and Abraham built an altar there and placed the wood in order. And he bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. The Ab- Abraham stretched out his hand and took the knife to slay his son. But the angel of the Lord called to him from heaven and said, Abraham, Abraham. So he said, here I am. And he said, do not lay your hand on the lad or do anything to him. For now I know that you fear God, since you have not withheld your son, your only son, from me. Then Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and there behind him was a ram, caught in a thicket by its horns. So Abraham went and took the ram and offered it for a burnt offering instead of his son. And Abraham called the name of the place the Lord will provide, as it is said to this day, in the mount of the Lord it shall be provided. And the angel of the Lord called to Abraham a second time out of heaven and said, By myself I have sworn, says the Lord, because you have done this thing and have not withheld your son, your only son, blessing I will bless you and multiplying I will multiply your descendants as the stars of heaven and as a sand which is the seashore and your descendants shall possess the gates of the enemy. In your seed, all the nations of the earth shall be blessed because you have obeyed my voice. So Abraham returned to his young men, and they rose and went together to Beersheba, and Abraham dwelt at Beersheba. All right, I got it. Yes, microphone. Good job. Thank you. Brian? Yes. Can we revisit a verse that you read? Um, I believe it's, uh, hold on, verse 5. This is what the New Jewish Bible says, but I believe I heard you say, Avraham said to his young men, stay here with the donkey. I and the, Bible, I and the boy will go there, worship, and we will return to you. Is okay. that what you said? That's correct. Then he prophesied. Right. Right. So He was so going to slay him, but he must have, I never, until you said, we will return. We, that word we, I went, ah, I think I heard That's him correct. say we, but this Bible doesn't say You're, we. You can't talk oh, with your Sorry, it, <laughs> it, I'll talk with my feet then. At any rate, um, <laughs> I and the boy will exactly. go worship this and we I'm will return. Into. This is what I'm leading you into. Okay. So I want to ask you the question, do you have a problem that God asked Abraham to kill his son? Is, is that, for me, as I read that, is when I first started studying this, that's a problem for me. Mm-hmm. Okay, there's kind of an issue with murder. It's like, oh, one of the, like, Ten Commandments or something like that. It's in there. You know, um, there's something about not murdering. Okay, but here is, here's Abraham that's ready to go up and kill his son. But, um, Leanne, you pointed out the first tidbit. And this is the fact. Abraham fully expected God to resurrect his son if it even got that far. Mm -hmm. Abraham knows God's nature and therefore he was not concerned at all. So, and, and so verse 22, 5, right there. We will come back. Mm-hmm. Another thing really quick that I never saw before. Mm-hmm. He expected the Hashem, the Lord, to resurrect him immediately. Because I can't remember how many days they were gone, but he said, we will return yeah, to have... you. In other words, you're not gonna, those two young men are not going to go back. Right. When they're waiting and waiting and waiting. Well, and, and they're waiting there while they go off to the mountain. <clears throat> I'm assuming, or the way I perceive it, Yitzhak would be resurrected immediately mm-hmm. because they would, that would have to happen for them to come back to the two right. young men. And that's the thing is they waited three days together. That's the part together, that gets me, is four. And then they, then they went up. And so it doesn't appear that they had to travel too far right. to where they returned, right? Otherwise, those two servants are like... Yeah. What do does, we do now? Does anybody else get this? I mean, the third day Abraham raised his eyes and saw the place far from a distance. On the resurrection I mean, what day. What was he right. looking at? Right. <laughs> right. He was what seeing was he? the resurrection. Right. Yeah. And 
Okay, so now um, I made this statement here good to me. that Abraham fully expected God to, to resurrect his son. And you don't have to just take my word for it. We can go to Hebrews uh-huh. chapter 11, verse 17. Through, and we'll start at actually verse 17 and go through 19. Mm. Um, would someone read that for me, please? So Hebrews chapter 11, verse 17 to 19. I'll give you all a reminder. Remember that we are, sure. we are thinking about passages that have helped you learn about God's nature or that have helped bring you to new freedom. Okay. Okay. By and faith, Abraham, when he was tested, offered up Isaac, and he who had received the promises was offering up his only begotten son. And, and we'll just continue, please, to 19. Oh, okay. And it, it was he to whom it was said, In Isaac your descendants shall be called. He considered that God is able to raise people even from the dead, from which he also received him back as a type. By faith, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau, even regarding things to come. That's really funny that they actually put the type in there, uh, the, the word type do. in that. What translation is that? This is New American Standard. New American Standard. So <clears throat> what is a type? It's a shadow. A type is an, in this context is an Old Testament representation of something that's going to occur in the New Testament. So what we're going to look at here is this example of Abraham and Isaac is a type for God and Jesus Christ. And so let's let's go through and and look at those examples. So um, one, Abraham was told to sacrifice his only son. God sacrificed his son for us, John 3.16. Mm -hmm. Abraham and Isaac took a donkey to the place of sacrifice. Jesus went to Jerusalem on a donkey. That last. Two servants went with Isaac. Mm -hmm. Two thieves were crucified with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Abraham received his son back after a three-day wait from when the the sacrifice was decided to when he sacrificed. And then, of course, Jesus rose from the dead on the third day. Isaac carried wood. He carried his own wood that was going to be for his sacrifice. Jesus carried the cross that he was crucified on. Abraham did not withhold his only son, God did not withhold his only son. That's the part I got. This was about the father, what he gave up. Isaac yielded to his father's will. Jesus yielded to his father's will. Mm -hmm. And finally, the last one I have is God provided the worthy sacrifice of a ram instead of Isaac because Isaac was not worthy. God provided his son who was a worthy sacrifice. So to circle back around with this then, Abraham had no fear because he knew God's nature. He knew the Father's nature. Isaac went along with this because he knew his Father's nature and trusted his Father. Right? How old is, is Abraham? Old. Would it be safe to be, say advanced in years? And then here, here's a strapping young man, that Isaac... Yeah, uh, he easily could have said, guess what, Dad? No sheep, no me. I'm out of here. But he trusted his father and obeyed. Just as Jesus knows his father's nature and obeyed and went through with what, with what he was called to do. <clears throat> Um, I'm getting to that point. So that's, so that's what I'm after. So, so now here, here's an example where what I want to share with you is, you know, a lot of what my goals for these afternoon sessions have been is equipping people to become more free. Uh, these are, and my subtitle is uh, Things Prayer Ministers Would Like Those They Pray For to Know, <laughs> right? And so um, <laughs> when, when we deal with spiritual warfare, as my dad brought up this morning, right, Ephesians, Ephesians 6. Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in a battle. But too often, it appears, we end up focusing on the battle instead of on worship, instead of on a relationship with God. Yeah. And so we get caught up in the battle. And I believe that, that what I'm, what I, I believe that we need to focus again on God's truth, not on the, the consequence of sin. 
And so what I'm getting at is when Jesus was directly confronted by Satan, there was no sword play. There were no, no word play, so to speak. There was no debate. There was no moderator. There was simply truth. Satan would say, blah, 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 look, all this could be yours. And then Jesus says, this is the Bible. This is straight out of the word of God. And Satan tried twice more, and that's it. There was no arguing like we end up doing when we're battling. Oftentimes, it seems like when we pray, the enemy will condemn us, right, for something. Like, you know, I don't even want to say it, but if, if, whether it's discouragement or a curse or you're going to fail, whatever it is, and then we'll start battling the lie instead of simply stating the truth that the Bible already tells us. So this is what we are going to do here first is remind ourselves back to what do we know about God's nature so that we can fall back on the truth, not bother fighting the lies. <clears throat> Um, oh, so, so Chris asked me the question, would you like me to post Bible verses that people mention? If so, can you please ask them to post the verse text along with the address? <clears throat> yeah, so if, um, uh, if you have a Bible verse or passage to share, please type in just the reference. Please don't copy and paste half the book of Psalms into the chat. Because what happens is that's too much to reference. So just give us the Bible verse and then maybe a quick little phrase that tells us what the context is, and then we'll take it from there. So, Leanne, you have one? This came to me just before you started reading Genesis. Okay. So I think it's a confirmation. Oh, yeah. I love it when the nice. Lord does that. Me too. Now, this is from my heart, from memory. I don't... Well, I, so if you can give us the reference? I'm, I'm going to... Okay, then we'll okay. let us turn to it. I am not looking at my phone right now. I okay. believe it's in Romans 8. You all, you all know this passage. Um, okay, hold on a sec. If the Lord is for us, who can be against us? The rhetorical question of the ages. Then it says, he who, he who gave his only son, will he not more... All, okay, get it quite right. He will also with him freely give us all things. In other words, the Lord is showing me about his character. He already gave me his son. That was the ultimate price that Jesus willingly laid down his life for us all, for mankind, and rose from the dead. So therefore, because that, not only has the Lord shown me that he is for me, who cares who's against me? Because he's for me, and that's the ultimate, and that's what really counts. So it shows me many things about the Lord's character. But also, since the first fruits, that's another thing that Yeshua or Jesus is called, the first fruits of the rest of us who will rise from the dead, that he will therefore also freely with him give me all things. In other words, whatever I need. He's already given me a son. And that should have been complete, that is complete, the complete sacrifice. Mm -hmm. So I have everything I need. He's the God that is more than enough. I forgot what that one is. <laughs> so isn't that in Romans 8, Chana? It's uh, Romans 8, 31. Thank you. Okay. And then if somebody would read it in context or sure, I'll, for one, I don't have it quite right. I'll, um, so it's uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 31. This is New King James. When then shall we say in response to these things, if God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also, along with him, graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. All right, anyone else? Someone they'd like to share. Yeah, let's, um, maybe we can uh, put this microphone on the other section. Right, no, but we can put it on this side just in case. Oh, okay. I thought she was there. Because she has one there, too. I didn't know you had one there. That's okay. 
And then also, if anyone has one online that they'd like to share, um, please go ahead and post those. And if you'd like to share any uh, personal testimony with it, uh, we'd love to hear that. We can unmute you, and then um, we'll, we can talk to you directly. Are you preparing for one right there? OK, while you're getting it ready, no problem. Um, I'm going to share one. Do you have one? OK. So if we could please have the reference, and we'll give everyone a chance to turn to it. Second uh, Chronicles 20, 15, and 17. Um, 20 what? Second Chronicles 20, 15. And 17. Good. So recently I went to a conference. It was the end of uh, this last uh, Jewish season, the Tabernacles or whatever it was. And they were having a conference. And went and that was the two primary verses. And it was very powerful to me speaking about how the Lord says this to you. Be not afraid, dismayed, that this great multitude for the battle is not yours, it is God. And out of 17, you shall not need to fight in this battle. Take your position, stand still, and see the deliverance of the Lord. And it was very impactful of this next <coughs> coming year of just being submissive to the Holy Ghost. Yeah. You have one? Mm -hmm. Ready? Okay, great. There's a microphone right here. Okay, it was in Genesis, and it was um, the section where Eve is given to Adam to be his Ezer Kenigo, and that translation is, of course, his help meet or his helper, but it's much more than that. As I searched it out, right. it is actually very powerful. It means like lifesaver, and... Um, you looked into. Mm -hmm. And the phrase is the only other place that that phrase is used is for God. Mm. And um, when we need him to come through for us desperately. And the scripture I had was Deuteronomy 33, 26. But every place where it says that you call out for help from God, that word help. You got to keep the microphone. That word help is that same word that Eve was mm -hmm. to be for, for Adam. That's powerful. That is. And so there is no one like the God of Jeshurun who rides on the heavens to help you. Wow, that's what we were created to be for Adam for, in that sense. Right. And so what that showed me was God's perception of what he created me to be. Yes. And it was mm -hmm. like, wow, that's powerful. That it's that 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 word was synonymous with what he does to help us. Right. Yes. How? And and um, what's what builds on what you're sharing here is uh, I grew up learning that God had Adam name all the animals and God saw that there was no one for him, so then he created woman. But when you read the proper order, God knew he was making men and women and putting them in charge equally mm -hmm. first. Yes. And it was Adam, the first being, who had to come to the understanding that he was alone. Mm -hmm. And then God provided. So it wasn't, it was mankind who realized it, that there was something missing. And then when, when God created woman, then he Adam, identified her as woman. And then we don't know how long they were together right. before things went all right. cattywankas. But, but, and uh, the thing that I wrote on that was um, 
was that do we have the right God perception of ourselves, the one that God created us to be, not the weaker vessel. Eve is a life giver. She is Adam's ally. It is both of them that the adventure is given to. And it will take both of them to sustain life. And they will both need to fight together. And um, it was just my I don't know, just how I felt about it. Thanks for sharing that one, Ellen. Yeah. Great. Who else? Anyone online? Chris, no one's <laughs> sharing online? Anyone else in the room? Like, hmm, what to share? What to share? One? Or? Okay. I have another something to piggyback back on us brothers. Can you just read that? It's from Second Chronicles 20. And what he shared was awesome. But I want to give another small portion of it. If you read it, the Israelites are up against three huge pagan armies, the Moabites, the Amorites, and then the Mosquito Bites. <laughs> Mount Seir. Se it wasn't the termites in this one. No, no, or the parasites. At any rate, okay, I'm going to skim. They were going through the Pass of Ziz. Okay. Oh, here it is, verse 20. Now, a pass would have been something similar to, remember Raiders of the Lost Ark toward the end when Indiana Jones was way up high on this cliff in the desert and he was looking down and they're trying to take the ark through this narrow crevasse. In other words, as the Israelites are marching, they can't see the valley. They can't see the battle. They can't see their enemies. And then this is what I call blind faith where you're just hanging on to the Lord's hand for dear life. And you know you have enemies, and you know they're overwhelming you, but you can't see them. So it says, uh, they're worshiping, verse 18, Adonai, they're worshiping the Lord. And then verse 20, the next day they rose early and went to the, to the Tekoa Desert. As they left, Jehoshaphat stood and said, listen to me, Judah, and you inhabitants of Jerusalem. Trust in Adonai, your God, and you will be safe. Trust in his prophets, and you will succeed. And this is after, verse 21, after consulting with the people, he appointed those who would sing to Adonai and praise the splendor of his holiness as they went out ahead of the army. In other words, the praise warriors were at the front. Saying, give thanks to the Lord. And now in the version I have, it says they shouted. So give thanks to the Lord for his mercy or his grace here continues forever then during the time that they were singing and praising Adonai brought a surprise attack better make a movie of this <laughs> a surprise attack against the people of Ammon Moab and Mount Seir who had come to fight Yehuda and they were defeated and then if you read toward the end of the chapter what the Lord showed me is God's economy and his holy ratio because they had three pagan armies and the Lord <coughs> caused the enemies to fight and annihilate each other. So that by the time the Israelites arrived at the Valley of Barach, which is praise, okay, or Baruch, I'm sorry, it's Baruch, um, all, all of the bodies were strewn across the valley floor. All of the enemy were totally annihilated. And it took them three days, there again is at number three, three days to pick up the plunder and so that means one day ah the lord will give me one day of plunder picking for every enemy i have and i don't know about y'all but i have a lot of enemies <laughs> that i will trample under foot so that shows me that as i praise his name and shout his identity and who he is in my life and what he means to me by faith that's when the Lord will cause the enemy, the enemies to annihilate each other. Very good. You have one? Yeah. Wonderful. I'll share. Um, it's Romans 8, 1 and 2. There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, who do not walk according to the flesh, but according to the spirit. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has made me free from the law of sin and death. And um, Hebraic that, thinking. That is one of my favorites. <laughs> Um, Hebraic thinking is that sin is anything where it's not, where it isn't originally. Keep, keep oh. 
the break thinking is when anything that was not originally intended to be is just out of alignment. And so, you know, before I would always think about, like, salvation of, like, Jesus Christ dying for me to just help me with my sin and everything. But Hebrew, but before the fall, we weren't ever supposed to die. We weren't ever supposed to age or get sick. All these things that ha happened with the curse in the fall. And that just gave me a perspective that, that this being in Christ Jesus means literally we don't have to really age. We don't have, I mean, this kind of out there thinking, but I just had a whole new perspective that we're not supposed to be aging. We're not supposed to be like dying and, you know, growing old and diseased because that's not how it was originally designed for us to be. So um, it just kind of gave me a perspective that, yeah, just, yeah, it's not just about, we need to get to know what it really means that we're saved. It's not just help us with our sin life or whatever, but we're supposed to go back to even before the fall and how everything was created perfect. Right. That's, that's well said. What, um, what I find with that one is that circles back for me right back to what we were talking about of knowing God's true nature mm -hmm. and being able to recognize, you know, discernment means that we're using all of our senses to pick up on what's going on. But that's not the whole picture. It's to be able to tell good from evil. And just because we're hearing something doesn't mean it's from God or from the enemy. But when we know God's nature, if we're being condemned, and there's difference between having uh, the Holy Spirit telling us something's wrong versus uh, we've got a, a dog in there versus when you're teaching a dog not to make mistakes on the carpet, you rub his nose in it. That's what the enemy does. The enemy rubs our nose in things and condemns us as opposed to God saying, hey, don't do that. And, and I agree, it's just, we got to go back to recognizing that what was God's original plan for us. Which I call the, uh, 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 be aligned to the original design. Can I share? Please. Okay. I have two here. Um, one is the understanding of a perpetual priesthood, and the other one is who you are in that position. So this is Hebrews 7, 7 8. He says, in the case of mortal men receive tithes, but in that case one receives them of whom it is witnessed that he lives on. Somebody was talking about that. And so to speak through Abraham, even Levi, who received tithes, paid tithes, for he was still in the loins of his father when Melchizedek met him. <laughs> and that kills me. <laughs> <laughs> it is. So to me, that is, that is one huge deliverance when I had this revelation. And I've spent years on this and can't get out of it. The fact that he was foreknown before the foundations of the earth, as well as crucified. Not to mention you were chosen in him for good works prepared beforehand, that you would walk in them. So then back to Romans 8. Y'all can't leave that because it's just a radical <laughs> chapter. <laughs> which is 8.21, that the creation itself <laughs> may be redeemed from its depravity. Okay, the creation itself also will be set free from its slavery to corruption into the freedom of the glory of the children of God. There's far more responsibility in that then we first received in understanding what the priesthood is like. Because he uses the picture of um, Levi, the Levitical priesthood, and when the priest changed, so did the law. So the priesthood had changed with the <coughs> new covenant, <coughs> absolutely. <coughs> so I just, <coughs> I wanted to share that. Anna online shared Acts chapter 16, uh, verses 25 and 26, uh, yes, Acts, uh, chapter 16, 25, and 26, uh, in the New King James, but at midnight, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns oh, to God, such a good one. and the prisoners were listening to them. Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken, and immediately, all the doors were opened, and everyone's chains were loosed. Anyone else? Anyone online? Anyone else? Keep it going. Going once, going twice. Anybody else got one? 
So I'll share, I'll share another one that I have. <clears throat> um, and for me, this is one, uh, this, this passage or this verse that I want to share is one that I find God unpacking for me. And I, one of the wondrous things about the word of God is that the same set of words can have new revelation with them as God works in your own life. So uh, Romans 12, 2 is do not conform to the pattern of this world, mm. but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, good, pleasing, and perfect will. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> and so let me share with you what, what God's been teaching me with this. Oftentimes, I find as Christians, we're like electric car Christians. Um, my dad has an electric car. He will not be buying another electric car ever. Really? Yes. <laughs> um, especially with the winds we have up here. Why is that? Well, with an electric car, right? I get you, to know, you, finally. Ch you charge it, mm -hmm. and then you drive around town with all your errands, watching your battery go down as you drive. And so, for those of you, if you're not aware of the high desert, we pretty much expect winds of at least 15 to 20 miles an hour right. each afternoon. Right. That's just the way it is. So, if you're going in a headwind, your battery d drains even faster. Just like in life, if you're in a headwind, if you're battling the enemy, then you get drained more, right? And so then it ends up, if you try to accomplish too much in your electric car, too many errands, or if you try to travel too far, then you're trying to think light thoughts, trying to make it home before your battery dies. Oftentimes, that's, I think, how Christians live. They spend some time with God or get to a Bible study, a fellowship of Christians, they worship, and they let God charge them up. And then like, okay, God, thanks for the charge. Let me unplug. Let me go into my week. Oh, if only I could just make it back next Sunday. And you're all this like, then charge back up, and okay, I'm ready to go. Instead of recognizing what this, again, this word renewing for me, I do not believe this to be a one-time act. I believe that when we work to not be conformed to the pattern of this world, the renewal is constant. Mm -hmm. So we're no longer trying to charge ourselves up and then go out, but mm -hmm. recognize that we can be in a perpetual. constant, perpetual renewal. Yeah. Absolutely. The only perpetual motion is in the kingdom of God. That's right. <laughs> not in what physics. This is Romans 12.2. That, that is good and, description and, right there. And, yeah, microphone? <laughs> Where could it be? Lee? Right there. Um, that word transformed in the Greek is metamorphi, which is where we get our word for the butterfly, metamorphosis. Mm -hmm. From So we're, I keep looking at, you know, ugly caterpillars that are earthbound. <laughs> and then it's the tight, uncomfortable, hanging upside down position, and we don't know exactly when. Mm -hmm. The transformation is taking place. There's a lot of prophetic metaphors in that one. Mm -hmm. in the chrysalis, yes. right? We can't right. see. We have no control over the transformation. Yes. Just trusting, hanging upside down. Mm. At <laughs> any rate, then we emerge, and we're no longer earthbound. And when you look at a butterfly, you would, in the human realm, you would never understand that it came from this ugly worm-type creature. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So when I think of be transformed, it means a radical metamorphosis so mm -hmm. that I will be with wings able to soar with the Lord Jesus. Can I share something yes. on the Please. tail end of that? Back to what you said, the original intent, uh, that this is scientifically proven. The caterpillar has cells in it. They're called imaginal cells. Imaginal? Uh, imaginal, yeah. Imaginal. Yeah, it does. That's exactly where they get it. These imaginal cells seem to coagulate within the confines of the caterpillar. And pretty soon the caterpillar can't fight them off anymore, and they form that Christus. So what they are are butterfly ce cells. So what it is is becoming what it already is. So originally the cells are butterfly that take over the body, <laughs> and then it becomes what it already was. That preaches. I know. <laughs> it's, hey, it's scientifically proven. <laughs> I, I don't uh, know. No, so far we have not had people who are <laughs> taking notes during the sessions. 
We have a series of people who have volunteered to transcribe these, mm -hmm. and I'm working on sending out the particular ones. But yes, eventually it will be so transcribed. To me, I, I don't know, maybe this fits into the restoration of all things. Mm -hmm. right. Right, girl, right. Maginal. <laughs> yes, that's our new Maginal cells. It's like our vocabulary word so, for the day. Yeah. <laughs> it's interesting how the, the caterpillar fights it off, though, like a virus would in your body. Because yeah. it's when the cells clump together that your body fights it off. I uh, want to remind everyone, either here or online, if you have general questions about any of the teachings from Aslan's Place or anything like that, um, anything from this morning, you're on your own. Because we're still learning. Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I can't answer anything from this morning. Yeah, you got, we don't got it all Okay, right we're here. still discovering. <laughs> but from other things, then uh, please feel free to, to pass those questions along. Also, if you're discerning or feeling something, feel free to let us know, and we can work on helping. We're, in these sessions, we're not locked into just like what we have written down on paper. We're going to follow God's lead, and if you're feeling promptings to ask questions, we want to address those as well. Okay. Uh, any others? Have any, anyone have anything to share? Do we have anything online? You have another one? Wonderful. This is um, the scripture in uh, Luke 24, 13, and it's just the story of the road to Emmaus. But what really struck me was that they did not recognize the Lord until yeah. he broke bread. The flesh. The uh. flesh. And, and they had, he had communion. And what that said to me was uh, the power of communion to reveal Christ within a person. I mean, how it you know, how it opens the, the prophetic, the, your, your prophetic to see Christ. I want to share one of the little tidbit with what we were talking about with Abraham. Um, that you know, we've, we've learned, remember how Abraham looked up and saw the place. And this is actually the same mountain where Jesus was crucified. Crucified, yeah. So that's why it's called the Lord will provide. Yes. Which um, is also Golgotha, which is where, the, where Goliath head is buried. That's true. The head had to be carried all the way. So, do we, do we, is that where we got our expression? Somebody has the gall. I'm not sure about that the one. The nerve. The gall. <laughs> I'm not sure no. about that. Well, Golgotha means the place of the skulls. So. Right. Yeah. Um, and so, th something else I want to share is uh, if you take a look at, um, I'll just give you the reference, but I'll read it for you here. Matthew 1 2. Um, this is NIV. Abraham, the father of Isaac. Mm -hmm. Isaac, the father of Jacob, Jacob, the father of Judah, and his brothers, which means Jesus, Jesus. is in the line of Abraham. Yeah, absolutely. Okay? And so, the, remember the blessing that the angel of the Lord declared, the level of prosperity that was released to Abraham and his descendants. Um, let me get you the verse, actually. The seed? Yeah. Grafted. Okay. Oh, Sorry, this is coming right as I'm talking. Talking, so. and he's... Since we are all in line to the father of faith, yeah, we so, are all from Abraham. Okay, so, um, so I'm still looking for the ver verse, but here's the idea. Through Jesus Christ, we are grafted into the line of Abraham. So that means that we have full access to those blessings through Jesus Christ. <clears throat> and sometimes I, I think we forget that. And we may not be recognizing it in the physical yet, but that's the connection that we have. That's one of the goals of generational deliverance, then, right, is for us to work with the Lord to find out what sin is blocking that inheritance from being brought down. So I just wanted to, to bring that connection. Yes? I just wanted to share a verse that I, when I grew awesome. up, um, you know, when I was probably about 14 uh, so, like, this is kind of a representation of, you know, where I was being led. Okay. Part of confirmation, at least. Um, <laughs> uh, 
Um, so I'm going to read from a couple different versions. One, if, uh, if you could give us the reference first, that way we. Genesis 50:20. 50, 20. 15. 5, 0, oh, 20. Okay, okay, thanks. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to read from a couple different versions. Uh, uh, for the uh, com- the complete Jewish Bible, it says, "You meant to do me harm, but God meant it for good, uh-huh. so that it would come about as day with many lives being saved." There's another version, um, the Living Bible. Uh, it, it translates as, uh, as far as I am concerned, God turned into good what you meant for evil. For he brought me to this high position I have today so that I could save the lives of many people. Kind of, that's the Living Bible. I like that. And so in context, then, this is Joseph. Um, mm-hmm. Right here at 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 the well, Joseph's right here at the end when he's talking with his brothers. Oh, that's a good one too. Thank you. Okay, any others? One of my favorite scriptures um, was that love is perfected in wisdom, knowledge, and discernment. Uh-huh. And right. that kind of ties into me um, when we were talking about uh, Genesis 22. And before God goes into the blessing, um, Abraham says, uh, Jehovah Yure, and he says that it shall be seen. Um, and to me, anytime you have darkness or confusion or there just isn't clarity in the path that we can have that and we can call upon you know, that love is perfected on wisdom, knowledge, and discernment, and at mm-hmm. the same time that we can call upon Jehovah Yure and say, I thank you, Lord, that it will be seen that you never leave us in the dark. Hmm. What's, what's the, and that's connected Genesis with Genesis 22. 22 right there. Hmm. Any others? These are all wonderful. So while we're just waiting for a moment to see if anyone um, anyone else has anything to share. Do, do you have a verse? Do you have a verse you want to share? Thank you. I'm just going through and just <laughs> thinking because coming from, not from this country, and then rec- this is a more recent one where we have a retreat, and I'm just thinking about Jeremiah 29, uh. where um, the Jeremiah is talking to the people from the exile, and the Lord tells them that uh, from verse Jeremiah 29, there's 4, 5, you know, all the way to uh, if you bless the city, you will be blessed. Mm. So Tas says, I'm reading uh, verse 4, Tas says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, to all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So here is talking about, um, actually it's the Babylonian that took them captive, but the Lord said it is his plan. Mm-hmm. And then he told them that, you know, don't live there like transient, but actually build houses mm-hmm. and dwell in it, plant the gardens and live in it, you know, marries, have sons and daughters. And then the part he says here is that, seek the peace of the city where I've caused you to be carried away captive and pray to the Lord for it, for it is peace you will have for when it has peace then you have peace mm. so I'm just thinking about that That's has kind good. of caused me to like think differently like not leave like just like by myself you know and just wait for rapture you know but mm-hmm. <laughs> that's great <laughs> right very on. good thank you for sharing that one. yeah that's good Jeremiah 29 4 Chris posed a question that I asked if he could repeat. Oh, yeah. These are definitely um, powers. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then, um, then we'll, we'll see if God takes us where I think we're going. Uh, go ahead. Pose your question. Oh, I had a um, kind of left field question. Was Right now you see a lot in the Christian TV and stuff about uh, sending into heaven, going into heaven, and walking around and interacting with God. But the uh, question I have is what would hinder you from doing that because that would be part of our inheritance right right it's a very good question and so i could give you a confirmation of of that ephesians 2 6 and god raised us up with christ and seated us with him 
in heavenly realms in Christ Jesus. That's NASA, by the way. Raise NASA, up. Okay. okay. And so, and so, by the way, just so you know, um, God's ramping up. Those of you who are online, God's ramping up for what he's doing next, and we're already starting to feel it in here. So if you start seeing us wiggle all over, that's because that's why. Um, so what, I, what limits that from occurring? One of the main things I find is when we have either in our own personal lives or in our generational line that the decision has been made to limit what God can do that's right. Into a compartment, mm. then God is gentle and does not force us into new places. Definitely. So, you know, if we can't handle what's occurring in creation around us, right. how could we handle what's going on in heavenly places? So it's like, okay, I need to wait until you're ready. I have a verse for that. And okay. Everything, Romans 1.20, everything in creation speaks of his invisible attributes. They're understood by what has been made. His divine nature, eternal power. And we're without excuse. So it's, I blew yeah. it, but that's you that got right? it. <laughs> yeah, we got the reference. Um, so we were we were just discussing everything. Okay, I so saw Chris. he never okay. usurps his creation law. Yeah. he speaks to that continually. <laughs> and um, <coughs> we must each make a personal decision to discover and press into what God wants to show us, and. Uh, you know, and my, that's the story somewhat in, for my dad in the book Ravens that he wrote, is when this began for him, as he, my dad was working on his dissertation for his doctorate of theology, a lot of big words in that sense. That's, that's when, a heck of a place uh, to start. That's when God <laughs> took him to school. <laughs> and so it was like, oh, you want to know what's going on? And he'd spend an afternoon pinned against the wall as God would teach him, you know, because not being able to move. So... Um, we we'll share with you Proverbs 25.2 in the NIV and see, you didn't know it, but what you were bringing up locks right in with what, yeah, what Chris was asking. It is the glory of God to conceal a matter. To search out a matter is the glory of kings. Believe that we could say here that God is eager for us to investigate. He's eager for us, and I would say that's why we're here. He wants to share our creation and as Janet teaches, he wants us to be co-creators with him. I think as we interact with God, new creativity occurs. Like so creativity. If, you find, if you feel that you're being limited in being able to enter the heavenly places, then take a moment to repent. There's something like, I repent in Jesus' name for any time I or those in my family line have limited your moves, God, or any time I have rejected That's a good point. or resisted good. where you wanted to take me or those in my family line. Please lead me where you want me to go. Could be a scary prayer. Yeah, this That's is a, the kind you pray in the see, shower. This is, this, is the kind, this, is, this is the kind of prayer where you say, be careful what you ask for. Be ready because God will, is okay. You ask for it. And, uh, and I, we say that jokingly. That's what we're supposed to be. That's what, I mean... Who pressed the boundaries more than Jesus Christ, right? And his disciples were constantly like, what in the world was that? And he's like, okay, here's a parable. And they're like, oh, okay, we get it. But then even then the disciples became apostles. They were sent by Christ. And then they pressed the boundaries out. And then the apostle Paul and, and a few others then had to unravel all the the ruffled feathers uh, mm -hmm. in, in the epistles, right, in the most of the New Testament. Um, and then we get pushed even farther, farther. with the book of Revelation, yeah. <laughs> right, mm -hmm. which is, you know, I still don't know that I'm going to have all the answers with that one until, well, that's the other thing, too. I, I joke, I don't think I have the answers until I'm up in heaven. It's like, okay, God, what? What in the world is that? But I, that's the moment we've decided that we know everything the Bible's teaching is the moment we've locked ourselves into a denomination and we have now and then we've limited ourselves. Limited God God's too. like, fine, you fit me in this box, then that's where I'll stay. For the so, allotted yeah. for the measure you use is the measure to you. Mm -hmm. Where's that one? Well that's actually in the context of not giving, mm. but it's in the context of um, <coughs> of the negative, really. Okay, so very good question. <laughs> Yeah, and judge, judge, yeah, it is. 
Microphone, please. When you're talking about the generational lines um, that's blocking us from knowing yes. the Lord in greater ways, I just I felt like maybe in my generational lines they were involved with the the dark side of things. Mm -hmm. They did know some of the power, but then they they wanted from themselves, and they didn't yes. want the continual for future generation to know yes. more. Mm -hmm. And and I look at the way the cults work. Yeah, they want everything secretive hidden and so that like when you're speaking I'm like that's a download I need to pray about that for, <laughs> okay, for me good. you know just, good. that's just, one of our yeah. goals here is to share insights yeah. about things we've learned pass on well good I'm glad that was helpful <clears throat> okay um, so we are um, we're just uh, started to discern two different spiritual beings that um, that are godly and actually there's two of one and one of the other so far uh, the way we find God does this when he's taking us to school, Same thing. remember, everyone we are he that's he here and online, we're all together somewhere else, speaking of being taken to heavenly places. So when we talk about discerning these spiritual beings, one, this is God showing us it's not our own ability. All cults do that. This is the Holy Spirit showing us what's going on. So I am not seeing with my eyes, under mm -hmm. my own ability. This is God showing me. I always make that Ouch. really clear, like a broken record. And so that means everyone who is online, or we find even watching this as a recording, God will help you wherever you are to also discern them. OK, so um, let's talk about powers. Let's take a look at a few Bible verses first. So first of all, let's take a look at Romans chapter 8, verse 38. Wow, we like that Romans 8. Come on. <laughs> Manifest is, that chapter. The title of this one could be the Book of Romans. <laughs> you know, you know, you think about this. Rome needed a lot of help, didn't they? I mean, talk about the false teachings they were wrapped up in, mm. and the pantheon that the the new church was dealing with there. It's no wonder that there's a lot of good truth that got, that Paul was unraveling. Right. Okay, so Romans eight thirty eight. <clears throat> Uh, would someone read that, please? <sighs> oh, that feels bad. For I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels Microphone. nor rulers nor Microphone. things. Well, I'll repeat now. Cool. All they're hearing online is. For, 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 for. <laughs> for I am sure that neither death nor life nor angels nor rulers nor things present nor things to come nor powers nor height nor depth nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. I like this right. word, convinced. Convinced, yeah. There's no doubt. There's no doubt. There's no okay. truth without it. So um, here's, one, here's one example then of the spiritual being powers, okay, that, that um, has come up. Mm -hmm. uh, growing up in Sunday school, what was the spiritual world? For me, there was angels, demons, Jesus, Satan, slash Lucifer, and that's it. That was the spiritual world. And then as Revelation came, you know, started, I heard from my dad, you know, when God's saying to us here at Aslan's Place, um, how, what's the physical world like? If you have a four-legged creature with whiskers that walks around, that's a cat, and you see another four-legged creature, is that also a cat automatically? No, that's a dog, cow, whatever it is. The physical world is so complicated, what makes us think that the spiritual world isn't at least as complicated, if not more? Okay, and so here we, and then, then like, okay, God, that's true. Then we go back to the Bible, and it's like laid out there right here. This one passage, there are multiple spiritual beings that are laid out, but yet we kind of sometimes refer to them as angels. Angels means messenger, right? And we see examples of messenger angels. Um, <clears throat> but in this case, what we, one of the beings that God has brought for us to learn about is the power. And what would also say is we find that any type of spiritual being, of course, everything started out godly. God created all of this. But during the fall, it, it, we find that all these different kinds of spiritual beings are a component of themselves. Was it a third of all these different kinds? We don't see that indication in the Bible. But Revelation tells us a third of all stars 
was, was swept out by the tail. So, and so even then, that wasn't even a third of all angels that, became, that were demons. It's a third of all stars, another spiritual being. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we were just talking about that earlier. By the way, recently okay. found out they have a heart. Oh, is that from yeah. the new revelation? Okay, but I want to sidetrack myself. Okay. So here, so they're coming back to me. this. So right now we've got powers, okay? So this is one example. Um, we talked earlier, I think, right this morning, I think about this verse. There's one other being that was mistranslated here. And this or, or is okay. in Ephesians 6, actually. But okay. anyways, in this example, it is powers, okay? Right. The word is dynamis oh, yeah, yeah. in the Greek, in the okay? Roman which you might recognize like dynamo, which is a, an electric generator that we would use in the physical world. Let's take a look at another one. Okay? Hebrews 6, 5. Whoa. Hey. <clears throat> Someone read that one for me, please. Mm. Everybody got it? Hebrews 6, 5. And have felt how good the word of God is in the mighty powers of the age and world to come. Okay, good. So powers, again, there's that word dynamis. Okay. All right, uh, one more. First Peter 3.22. I'll read that one. Um, uh, who has gone into heaven? Let me, let me back up. I love these verses where they're mid-sentence. Like, really? <laughs> who decided anyways where to put where the to verse put markers? <clears throat> 22. Yeah. Well, so it backs up the, just so we have the, the, some context here. There is also an antitype which now saves us, baptism. Not the removal of the filth of flesh, but the answer of a good conscience toward God. Through the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Who, so that, now we know who we're talking about is Jesus. Mm -hmm. okay, who has gone into heaven and is at the right, right hand, hand of God. Heaven. Angels and authorities and powers have been made subject to him. So here's another example that these other beings are not angels. They're, they have other jobs to do. So here it is again, it's powers. And guess what the word is? It's dynamis in the Greek. Okay, so here's three biblical examples of where powers are. Okay, now, <clears throat> um, so let's practice some discernment. I, for, it depends on what my job is at the moment. In ministry, I, if I'm praying for someone, I often feel more than I see, I'll, um, so to speak. But if I'm teaching, teaching. then I often, what will happen is God will give me a sense of what's going on in a room. And by the way, I've always wondered, okay, well, how is it that things are always conveniently in the center of a room mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> or on the stage? You know, well, remember that this is God's frame of reference in other dimensions that he's giving us a sense into. So he brings us into a scope that we can understand. Yeah. Our flesh would probably have really tr a deep amount of trouble trying to perceive these in, in, with our fleshly eyes. I have to mention so, this now while you're on that. This is okay. kind of important too. Um, in a corporate situation, mo most of the time I don't see that string strongly. Like if I'm working with Paul and he's leading the session, I'll see. I'll see a lot more than I feel. Don't know why that is, but that fits the overall diversity to bring in that unity. Like Brian pointed out what he was seeing here. I just confirm it by feeling it. So it depends on the mix. You're diversified in everything you do. It's not an either or thing. And I'm telling right. you that for a reason because we try to put it in a box and then he changes it because he never talks to you the same right. way twice. Yeah. Um, I, I've, I've, I find it funny when <clears throat> I give people advice telling them to ignore other people's advice. Okay? <laughs> but, but I advise you to not allow others to limit you in what your gift yeah. is. You're That's a good. seer. You're a prophet. It's like, excuse me, I'm whatever God wants me to be mm -hmm. at this yeah. time, is what I'm saying. Yeah. Okay, so you, you may see, hear, feel, taste, touch, all of the above, none of the above, different times depending on what God's doing. And also at the same time, I urge you to never compare what you're picking up to someone else mm -hmm. and feel that you're in any way less blessed, less saved, 
less equipped than another person. We are all individuals. That's a whole other Bible study, which we won't get into yeah. at the moment. I, I hereby apologize to Brandon, who I told at the beginning of the session that we wouldn't be walking around very much. So, <laughs> but now we're going to. So, Brandon, we're all about to stand up. Okay. That's, so, more, that's more consideration than we give you. I know. Why do you think I'm doing it? Okay, so, Jana, um, would you please point out where the two powers are? Okay, that, we have a power that. here. Oh, gosh, is that intense? <laughs> and, but, by the way, you'll notice, um, if you want to come feel this, come feel this. And by faith, this increases. So, whoa. Yeah, and so when we you, pay attention to what God's doing, right. then he's, <laughs> he, going to, like, he's going to honor that and then move more. <laughs> I don't know how Paul does this. Which, are you right or left-handed? Uh, right. Okay, You're right-handed? So, so take your left hand. Hey, Brandon, me. can I see you come in the window, please? Come in. So you're, you're able to, you got the cameras going? Okay, thank well, you. Do it again. Hey, as, as Jan is showing more. them here, when we're discerning, we... Can you feel the what energy? that means is we stop and we pay attention to what's going on with our senses. Hey. And here what we're doing is we're starting our hand from a, what we call a neutral place, mm -hmm. a location where we don't know about anything, and we're moving it in until we feel the difference. Um, at the same time, you could be, even those who are online, be praying and asking God to show you what is going on. All this is about following God's lead. And this is wherever you're at, too. Yes. Yes. Um, if, and if anyone here is seeing anything, let me know. We'll get you a microphone Anna, first. Anna says she's discerning something on her left arm. Not sure what, Not it, sure is. what it is, but it doesn't, it doesn't feel, feel good. good. And it was feeling during the first session, too. Okay. Okay. Okay, so let's pray for Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would remove any interference that is attempting to block what you want to do. God, we ask you to bless everyone who is participating here online or as a recording, that you remove any interference. So, Anna, let me know if that helps. I feel it. Um, so, by the way, I often feel deliverance occurring, which is a confirmation that something mm -hmm. has been broken. I feel it off of my forehead is tingling like something streaming off my forehead. And also, Anna, this could be for your education. God will often show us both. He'll show us both right. so we can discern between good and evil. Because <laughs> it's the sons of Zadok. You found, did, did you point thing. out the other one to Chris, or did he find no. it? No, Chris found it. He found it by himself. So what we didn't tell you is we that didn't the, tell you we saw a separate here. power Now this right guy there. is a different intensity. So you'll find out there's different personalities. Oh. Come feel this. Sure. Will you run away, Chris? So, um, <laughs> so we joke, you know, see? imagine if you're watching this without any audio, and all you see is a bunch of people wiggling their arms around in the middle of the stage. So go back and feel it again. <laughs> so um, Chris just said it was like getting powers. shocked by, by 120 volts. So that's volts. interesting you knew there's three. Yeah, that is. Okay, if we have any questions intensity. or comments by anyone else, let's make sure we get a microphone. Oh, hey, let's do that. What did they do with them? What a good dog. Yeah, it is. Okay, ask So your that's, that's our next thing. Oh, are there... Okay, so why are they here? She yeah, said, right? why are they here? Okay, so that's a very good question. It, it, when you've felt it, feel free to sit back down and let's talk about it. As <laughs> Jana walks through exhibit. For, for this one that was <laughs> over here, uh -huh. I heard the color yellow. I didn't see In, that. That's color. amazing. You heard a color. I believe yeah, it. I was like, okay, that's Oh, Okay, so you're walking right through it. Uh, feel that. Okay, so you asked the question, why are they here? Are that is a very today? good question. <laughs> and when God shows us something, this is not like going to SeaWorld. It is not just like going and quality. watching fish in an aquarium, like, oh, look at the pretty colors. Look, I'm hearing the color yellow. It is so that we can find out what God wants us to do. Not that there's anything wrong with hearing the No, right. I just, I just love that. That's just a perfect example of discernment. Okay. Um, when you discern something, and again, that means picking up something is occurring with any of your senses. Here's what we should do. You ask God, what is this and what am I supposed to do about it, if anything? Or you... And, Along with that is, what are you doing, God? Okay? So, we always want to go first through the, from the Bible, and then we can get revelation as God teaches us more. 
right? Because we have Proverbs 25. As we are searching out a matter, then we're going to learn new information. Anything we learn, which we would probably call prophetic, it must test as truth against the Bible. And in fact, I didn't say it today, but that is the, the foundation of what these sessions are. This is called Biblical Discernment Exploration. We've got the Bible. We've discerned. We're going to go exploring was this morning, right? <laughs> We're still exploring. Okay, but anything we learn has to be tested against the Bible. If something were like, oh, I believe that this is in charge of the M&M factory. You know, it's just because you've declared it to be true. It's like, well, okay, you know, is the Bible going to say there will be two powers in charge of the M&M factory? No. But what I'm saying is we want to test and say if we declare something to be true and it counteracts the Bible, guess who wins? The Bible. The Bible does. Okay. So anyways, so what have, we, what have we learned? Well, first of all, we can already tell the word that's already been used in the Greek is dynamis. So as you might imagine, powers we find are connected to electromagnetic fields. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, <clears throat> and so what, what we find then, I'm, I'm going to shift gears into what have we discovered and learned. Okay? All right. Um, we've learned that, that powers, one, I've, I've found them to bring plans. And then so you ask yourselves, that we find out these characteristics, you ask, is it godly or ungodly? Because if they're bringing plans and it's godly, you get godly plans. If it's bringing plans and it's ungodly, then this is not anything we want to have a part of. They bring plans. They appear to be attached or connected with electromagnetic fields, which means they could be involved with energy. And so when we're discerning godly powers, um, then one, we want to see what is God revealing about his nature, about his plans for us, and is he connecting us in new ways? Remember, it's his power. Not This being doesn't have any power of its own. It's either, that is a really good point. Oh, I'm glad you're saying that. It's either helping to deliver Never. God's power or it's trying to steal power if it's ungodly, mm -hmm. which leads me to the other thing. When we're dealing with ungodly powers, um, I often discern them like a transformer or this little squat mechanism that has wires coming off of it. We find that behavior in um, worshiping the Lord. Yeah, and they're depleting, right. Because, and it's, so what's happening is, remember, what is Satan's goal? We want to know, we know God's nature first, and we want to understand what God reveals about the enemy's nature. From the very beginning, the enemy is trying to steal our creativity, trying to steal our giftings and anointings. Okay? So that means that with fallen powers, that's when we sin, these behaviors can give the ungodly powers the right to co-op, steal, drain mm -hmm. what was intended for good. So this can cause you to feel depleted. Nothing seems to go right. You never have energy. And so then what we do is we find it often is associated with worship of the land. Um, the first time I learned about it when God was teaching us how to pray about these, it was actually tied to Native American worship of the land, thanking animals for themselves as food instead of thanking God. And so we went through a set of renunciations for that, and then that rights were removed and the evil left. Mm -hmm. And other characteristics of this when we're praying for somebody is I can usually tell because ungodly powers are in place that they're dealing with depression or some area of uh, loneliness and abandonment or physical disorder. Powers seem to be around that uh, spiritual, mental, or physical disorders. So mm -hmm. That's where I could start asking the questions. Right. <clears throat> And so, so what's the main reason that they're here? I believe it's because God wanted to teach us this, mm -hmm. <laughs> as why we're here, here. But then we, let's take a moment, we'll pause, and we will ask God, Lord, is there anything else you want to teach us about powers right now? Let me look on, um, online yeah, here. Yeah, I think um, what she put up there will probably is coming against this next being. So, okay, so um, Anna says, I've been discerning something in my left arm. I'm not sure what it is. It doesn't feel good. Okay, that was from the first one. Chris, we can remove the, that... Both of these. The other one is my elbow really hurts. It's weird, but maybe it's deliverance thing. I don't know. Now, I saw something. Okay. I believe I could reach into the realm and pull that off of her. Okay. 
Do you want to bring up on camera, or you want to just do it? I don't think, can she come up on camera? Uh, no, Anna was one I think who, could, no, let's just do yeah. it through prayer. This is an example of how, okay. when we're praying for each other, we don't have to see him, we don't have to be in the same room. God is doing this, and mm. guess what? He's everywhere. <laughs> and you know, the interesting thing, I'm going to stand up and manifest this, because um, this has happened before that I can actually, this is the first time I've heard of this in a long time. Okay. I feel the Lord leading me. So I can find that place. So God is connecting you supernaturally. To, there it is. There's the realm. And so, Lord, we just take off that connection of ungodly power. We cut off the return of that. And, and Lord, we ask that you would shut the gate to the dimension that is affecting her in negative power. There, I feel that. Okay. So it would be interesting. Yeah, to Anna, know. let us know if, how things are going. Okay, any questions about powers? <clears throat> going once, going twice. Chris? feels like the whole round is delivered. Yeah. That's... So with uh, something like that example, how do you know what door or gate to close? Good question. I, again, I feel that pressure, or, you know, like the <coughs> electricity you were feeling. And so I felt there was something that went all the way through her elbow that was holding on to an electric magnetic energy that was negative. So I actually think it's a region or a realm that affects her. <coughs> Can I yeah, check? So when you're talking, I just feel like a knife. Then is that like just because I'm, how will I know is it from the Lord or not from the Lord? So what, that's a very good question. How do you know if it's from the Lord or not? That's yeah. a very good question. Uh, my first answer is, who are you pursuing? If you're pursuing the Lord, uh -huh. then I would say you are feeling something mm -hmm. that he is revealing. Mm -hmm. And regardless of if it's evil or, or good, mm -hmm. we can rely on the fact that God's the one showing us, mm -hmm. and then we just need to find out what we're supposed to do about it. Mm -hmm. My immediate sense as you discussed that is that you were actually discerning dimensional shifting or dimensional access. Mm -hmm. Access would be good. Feels like a point. And so yeah. what I think, so in other words, well, what does that Let's mean? Put that together. You were discerning that there was behavior that was crossing through from one place to another <laughs> oh, yeah. supernaturally. I totally is, get it now. <laughs> which is what, what Gianna... <laughs> Is it still not? My st <laughs> no, I understand it, but I could get why okay. she wouldn't. Yeah, so help me out here. This is some. Well, what's he better... He's talking about dimensions, so it's not in a three or four dimensional even. Mm -hmm. It's it's something outside of the dimensions so that we way. know in the natural. Okay, I think I could get. I'm <laughs> okay, sorry. Okay, good. No, Sometimes you did I get too stuck up in vocabulary. So, right. Um, not at all. It's when just... <laughs> when we're when we're working with God, then we're we're having a connection to heaven. So it's almost like we're here, Anna is somewhere else on the planet. God is taking us through heaven Good. so okay. that we're connected together and working. We're all one body, right? So everyone on this entire planet is actually part of one body of Christ. And so that <laughs> means we're attached in a way that we cannot pick up. So what I think you were feeling was how God was connecting what Jana was doing here with what Anna had going on, and you're feeling that connection. So yeah, much two. like you'll feel a deliverance as well. So what, um, can you bring that one back, Chris, please? We didn't get a chance to see. <laughs> I think Anna just wrote that she's grateful and that there was an improvement. Yeah, she said she was grateful um, and for blah, the blah, prayer blah. <laughs> and, and that there was an improvement. Then she felt like there's something like a glove oh. on her. I felt this was coming against her worship, okay. which I think is a this prophetic is a, discernment, which yes. is where you're going. That's a whole other tidbit. We can have discernment that is prophetic, which means <laughs> it's not in the room yet. It's not happening, but you're picking up ahead of time. And that makes things really fun. Uh, I know, and everyone's brains are starting to hurt a yeah, little bit. Yeah, well. And this is the fun thing of being a facilitator <laughs> is to be able to try to track all this and watch for God's timing. Chris, I think you had something. Else. For uh, basically like what you were guys do, was doing, I had get, gotten scriptures a little while ago on uh, the connection we have between 
Christian brothers and sisters, yes. no matter where you are on mm-hmm. the planet, that you're able to do that. And uh, I have two scriptures, um, Philippians 2, 1, and 2 Corinthians 13, 4. And basically out of Philippians 2, 1, so by whatever appeals to you, there is our mutual dwelling in Christ, by whatever strengthening and consolation and encouraging our relationship in him affords, by whatever per eh, persuasive incentive there is love by whatever participation in the holy spirit we share by whatever depth of affection and compassionate sympathy that in dwelling in christ allows us to connect almost like a phone call between each other and be able to (laughs) reach into the dimensions absolutely you know it's funny she said and i'm not sure how to interpret this but uh she she doesn't know how to explain this. It's all weird to her. <laughs> Welcome to our world. Yes. <laughs> so we never have all the answers. But in, interesting, when I feel my hands in a glove, that's actually what I feel when I go in the realm. It's like an oh, angel yes. has wrapped it up, and I'm reaching into something to do something. <laughs> that sometimes describes it like a wetsuit or a deep-sea diving suit. That too. And I've actually cleansed the spiritual DNA. And this is one of the purposes of original purposes of these sessions is to give everyone an opportunity to, to gather and practice together because we all discern and see differently. Okay. Something shifted, for yeah. sure. So let me share this one last is passage. It? Yeah, good. Um, if, because I want to make sure we have a full frame of reference on what's going on. Um, let me make sure I get the right reference. Okay. So um, make a note, if you would, of Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And this is talking about Jesus Christ, okay? Um, So I'm going to pick it up from verse 20 just for the sake of time. Um, Which he, this is God, worked in Christ when he, God, raised him, Christ, from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all principality and power, dynamis, and might, and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that age to come. Anytime we feel that we are overwhelmed, we're being beat up, we're being dragged, remember that you've, you're a Christian, you've given your life to Jesus Christ. That means that you have direct connection to this kind of authority. Don't get no better than that. Pardon my grammar. <laughs> no, that- Okay, so, so again, what is God's nature? God's nature is that he sent his only son to die on the cross, rose again, proving he's the son of God. Mm. Okay, and then he is raised up above everything else. So all these powers, everything else that we're discerning, God has authority, or Jesus Christ has all authority over it. He's conquered it all. And we have access to that authority through Jesus Christ. Therefore, no weapon. Prosper, etc., etc. Insert all the 66 books of the Holy Bible. Okay, let's talk about the next one. And I lost my page number. This is where it shifted. Okay, so this should be fun. So I, and like I said, I'm not a big seer, but in this case, I'm seeing. So I don't know if you guys can look around. Does it look brighter in here? It feels lighter. Lighter and brighter. That's a good thing. Yeah, look around and see what you see. Yeah. <laughs> Okay. Because don't eliminate the fact that you can see, too. So. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Isaiah, chapter 6, 1 through 8. We're going to talk about seraphs or seraphim. There's a new seraph in town. <laughs> Sorry. I couldn't resist. I, 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 my wife has to put up with me all the time. Yeah. I, you know, the woman should get paid. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Or, or one, so seraph is a singular, and so there's one here. The plural is seraphim. Him. More than one. Uh, Isaiah 6, six. One, 1 through 8. Yeah. So I don't blow up my voice completely. Would someone please read that section? In the year of King Uzziah's death, I saw the Lord sitting on a throne lofty and exalted, with the train of his robe filling the temple. Seraphim stood above him. Mm. 
each having six wings. With two he covered his face, with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called out to the other and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And does that carry through verse 8? Oh, I will. And the foundations of the threshold trembled at the voice of him who called out while the temple was filling with smoke. Then I said, Woe is me, for I am ruined, because I am a man of unclean lips. And I live among a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. And the one of the seraphim flew to me <laughs> with a burning coal in his hand, like which, <laughs> which he had taken from the altar with tongs. He touched my mouth with it and said, Behold, this has touched your lips, and your iniquity is taken away, and your sin is forgiven. Then I heard the voice of the Lord saying, Whom shall I send, and who will go for us? Then I said, Here I am, send me. Something I didn't realize before is, even this, this seraph had to pick up this coal with tongs. It's pretty yeah, significant. Yeah, even he can't touch yeah. it. I am. I just <laughs> okay. got that. All right. Seraphim. The word seraph literally means burning one. Okay, it's perhaps suggesting that these creatures have a fiery appearance. And that is how I see them. How I see these beings is actually as a bubbling flame or a bubbling tower of fire. Okay, and so now, so what's going on? We discern seraphs. What's going on when we have this? Well, let's, let's see what you feel and see first, and then uh, we'll talk about, we'll dig in a little bit about what this indicates. Mm -hmm. Well, this is where we discovered it is. Well, <laughs> so everyone come on up and so take a look. So you want to come and give this a challenge. Remember that, that God will... Bring you to a place where you, even if you're online or participating on the recording. <laughs> and uh, I'd love to hear some descriptions with the microphone of what you're feeling yeah. seeing. Yeah, grab that. Chris, you got it? Chris got one, thank you. And here's right. another one. It's a wind, but... Okay, so you're discerning a wind? Now, how I feel this is the feet from the, I mean, the heat from the ground up. Yeah, I'm feeling It's like, that. whoa. I would like to know also how you're okay, feeling. I want you to step in there. If you, have, if you hear any words, if you're compelled to say anything. Remember, anytime we're, we're driven to speak, or um, it, it's always with the gentleness from God. You should never oh. be out of control and like, you know, kicking oh. in the tongues or whatever, but <laughs> we're going to do everything in right timing. Worshippers oh, fall forward. <laughs> <laughs> we'll just all fall over. Why don't you step in, Chris? I want you to feel this. Step in. Okay. Yeah, okay. so you have a discernment. Oh, okay. You feel what's on him. Yeah. Or, uh, what's <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so, so Anna is sharing. Um, last year, oh, the doctor said that you, she had cancer in her left arm. And since that day, she hadn't been able to worship freely. Kind of a big deal since she's a musician called to worship. Okay. Wow. So... Uh, Anna, first of all, I'd like to know what is the current condition or diagnosis, whether um, in uh, remission, uh, treatments ongoing. Please let me know the current situation. We want to pray about this. And, and so then I want to share with you, this is, um, I'm not sure if you know how timely this is. Yeah. What is going on here in this passage in Isaiah? It is worship. worship. Seraph. Are direct, uh, seraphim, the plural, are directly connected to worship. Right. This ain't no little ukulele, ukulele. kind of worship. Okay. This is the temple where the Lord God is sitting on his throne and it is shaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. The posts of the doors were shaken by, by this seraph. Okay. This is worship. <laughs> so when we discern a seraph or seraphim, 
then that is an indication that we should worship. Mm -hmm. So, Anna, I believe that then God is releasing worship to all of us here. Ooh. And so I'd like to know the answer, a little confirmation there. Yeah, um, yeah, I had the sense that it was coming against your worship, Anna. So the, this is the manifold wisdom of God, that he would take care of a need. Why, yes. you know, why ahead of time we were discerning this. It all comes together. That's how much he's for you. Okay, so I haven't seen an answer yet, but we're simply going to lift this up. Lord, we lift up Anna, everyone here, everyone who's online or watching from recording. Lord, we pray that you would bring your healing and release your worship. Mm -hmm. God, we bring praise to your name. You are the King of kings and yes. the Lord of lords. You are the creator of everything. Cancer, sickness, infirmity has nothing against you. Mm. Lord, I pray that you release your healing and you release any... Uh, let's see, Lord, I pray that you would tear down any resistance to your worship. That's right. Healing, Lord. Mm-hmm. And one thing cool to remember is you don't always feel well in the same spot. Um, I know we had a, a sister over here. Hers was a lot lower when I was feeling where she was trying to feel. I could feel it on, on me. So I had to move her hand to where she realized where it was. That's an angel. And uh -huh. her sister, hers was like way up here <laughs> yes. before she picked it up. So right. it's not always the same. But yet, thank, thank you for sharing that, Chris. That. But yet, through confirmation, we're having this extra boost of understanding that we're all on the same track. Mm -hmm. well, for, during the, one of the reasons I took the break when I did, because I wanted to pause and ask Jana what she was discerning so I could get confirmation on what I was picking up on. We have to remember that we're all on a team. Uh, I've learned very early on that I never simply declare until I've tested. Mm. And I believe that's a very good habit to have. Sometimes I think we step out ahead of the boldness of God and we simply declare what's going on like we know everything and, and I, don't like, I don't feel safe doing that because God's always teaching us new things. But anyway, so we've kind of diverted back over to the power. Or what's, what we Actually, have going there's on an here. angel here. There's an angel there. So, uh, <clears throat> But the interesting thing about the seraph, seraph I can almost talk here. <laughs> I, I'm getting drunk, so. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> It gets crowded. I agree. <laughs> and I thought that for a while, Chris, would you like to yeah, deliver go, the message? Chris. Uh, come on. Yeah, so, on so God's dude. lead. So this is actually something else that's leading you around. I see is an angel in front of I you. Because I noticed he had here. a lot of movement. And there he's leading go. you around. No, so I, feel I free to follow the lead. <laughs> huh? Okay. Um, All right. So hang on for just a second. Chris is going to see about um, delivering the messages that we're discerning. So we'll let him do the talking for a moment. Uh, I ask you, Lord, what do you want to say? <laughs> do not be afraid of the night, for the light of my day is coming. I shall burn away the fight. Do not be afraid of the sword, or the one, or the plight at night. <laughs> Be, the one, be aware of the one with the smooth words and the calm talker. For he will draw many away into the night. Believe in the Father, the Son, the Lord of light. Mm. You carry an anointing, you carry the gift, you carry the fire that I've put in to be fearful in the night. Uh, all I hear is that decree. So I decree what I am hearing. Good. Let my children go or I will bring terrible burning fire into the night. You have no right mm. to hold what is right. That's good. Let them go. They will not flee. 
Believe in me, for I will provide you with what is right. Clean and holy. I got sight and insight. Mm. Mm. And this is done by thanksgiving and praise and worshiping, even at night. Mm. <laughs> Very good. Good. Wonderful. Good job. So, um, some may wonder, why did Chris go and stand where the seraph was in order to receive the message? We show this as an act of obedience in the physical, showing that we're choosing to listen to what God wants to tell us by going and standing there. All right. Any um, final thoughts, questions? Angel message? I think we're, this, that was the message. Yeah, can I read this particular scripture? Um, yes, you can. I've had people ask this. Now, why would the Lord send a message to an angel? Um, mm. Or a seraphim, for that Good fact. Question. Which is probably why the angel was here, too. Which is interesting. You knew to go get the message. So, for this reason, we must pay m much closer attention. This is Hebrews 2. To what we have heard, so that we do not drift away from it. For if the word spoken through angels proved unalterable and every transgression and disobedience received a just penalty. So probably most of the time you get a prophetic word is from an angel. Um, quite often, especially in a corporate arena, you know that inner voice, that Holy Ghost thing that between you and God is intimate. But I'll feel like this is outside giving them, and that's why I feel the movement. It's more the angel. So I just wanted to bring that up so you guys are going, yeah. why would you talk to an angel? <laughs> yeah. And, and by the way, we do not seek out a power, a seraph, or an angel. Ooh, ooh. God <laughs> brings it. Anything we do, the focus is on God. We don't want to be calling on angels. Right. Um, if you be, are thankful, thank God for sending the angel. Don't thank the angel. Um, Thank you, Lord. There's nothing wrong with talking to an angel, right? We, we see that, but I believe that it's a proper frame of reference where God is the focus, mm -hmm. not the angel, or it, whatever spiritual being it is. Because that's where we can get ourselves into trouble. Mm -hmm. Try to. Okay. That's still the what one from. Say? I had cancer in the left arm. Yeah, okay. so I asked. She didn't the, come up with something? No, we didn't, but we, we prayed and addressed that. Um, Chris, nothing new from Anna? We can delete those two. Yeah. Okay. Uh, any other thoughts, questions? <clears throat> is this one going off? Yeah. That's the prophet finger. So okay. mine is two, and right now an elder okay. has a hold of that. Uh, that's a whole. So you got pastor and prophet. Prophet. So I guess there's more to a message. You think? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, okay. mine too. Yeah. Okay. So uh, do you have a question? Let's get you on the microphone. Okay. Good. Um, sometimes it's just, just now, just like the just joint the tip here. Just your finger right here. Feels like, like this. It's a pain. What is it? That? Is this finger? This, I don't know, this or this, I didn't, I like, <laughs> what is that? It's, uh, this is how we have in discernment. Okay. This is apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher. Oh. Um, so, so this okay. is going off for some reason. Okay, so, Lord, what's going on? You want to try and listen yeah. for a message? <laughs> okay. Okay, let's um, get you your mic. Come, we'll get your mic. You want Somebody to go over? Somebody want to hold it for or you can carry it yourself. Oh, she got it. Find out where you, you should stand because... Okay, I'm going to walk around. Okay, good. So she's going to walk around. Right, the angel was leading you a few minutes ago. Yeah, because she was just... Yeah, there is. There's a lot of something uh, here. Yeah, it's getting busy. That feels right there. Yeah. Oh, Lord, so show me, Lord, I ask that you show me um, whatever no it is. No pressure. Mm -hmm. A you message you have for us. If you don't pick up anything, then. Oh, man, it's a power on that. Oh, shit. Oh. 
celebrate. Celebrate. For my will has come. Mm -hmm. My light will shine. Beyond all horizons. Mm -hmm. Break the tides. Mm. For the waves are flowing over my land. Mm. Be still and see. Oh. My light over the horizons. For I am true. Oh. And this is new. Mm. of what I will do mm. for you. Mm. Blessings, blessings mm. over the horizons. Watch and see. Come like waves over the horizons. For my land has been set free, and you are to be walking free on these horizons. Power, power manifested. In my name, in you, in my name. Do not be deceived. By what is untrue. but believe but believe in me for I am true mm, that's good I will carry you high higher than you know just as the eagle soar over the horizons. That's, that's good. I feel like have you ever delivered a word like that before? No, I don't even that's, remember when I first 
Oh, that's okay. We've got on the recording. Okay. I should have been typing away. Okay. Well, we've got on the recording. Here's the verse that would line up with what you were saying. Yeah. For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. Remember you saying the sea over the earth? What is that? Habakkuk 2.14. Habakkuk. All right, let's close. Lord, we do celebrate. Mm -hmm. And Lord, I thank you that the celebration continues even as we conclude here today. Mm. Lord, I pray that you would move ahead of us every place we're traveling, whether we're here or home or on a video. I'm watching and recording. Lord, I pray that you will continue to unfold as we seek your revelation, your truth. Lord, we declare that we want to continue to follow your lead. I pray that you'll bless everyone here. And Lord, we praise your name and celebrate all that you are doing. Amen. Amen. Do you want to find me? Come through that open door. Don't be afraid to ask of me. Come through the open door.